The final method that we're going to introduce for solving partial differential equations is called the finite element method. And the finite element method is, is a, a very, very uh, commonly used approach and, and has a lot of advantages. One of them is that it's, it's generally applicable to, uh, to a lot of uh, problems. In other words, the framework is general enough that it can accommodate a, a lot of different problems. And another advantage is is we already talked about previously that the the different geometries and and differing materials can cause um, some complications for the other methods uh, for the uh, like the finite difference method for example and uh, the finite element method handles this very nicely um, but before we get into it too much let's let's break it down to, into into six steps and then we can go into each of the steps more in detail. Uh, so the first step is to discretize the domain. Discretize the domain. And this step is really the root of, of where the whole the whole name for the finite element method comes. Uh, and the thing about the uh, this discretization is that each element doesn't have to be exactly the same size or, or anything like that. So that's uh, a big advantage. Um, and they don't have to be laid out in a rectangular grid or any of those things. Uh, the second step is to uh, derive a simple um, or at least simpler <laughs> we'll put at least simpler um, finite element equations. Now, this is really where all the complication and all the all the difficulty, the conceptual. Um, this is conceptually pretty involved in deriving these uh, finite element equations. But, um, w well, the overall concept of what you're doing isn't that difficult. It's just there are a lot of different um, concepts involved in, in what we're due to derive the finite element equations. These are called just called the element equations a lot of times. Uh, so the third step then is to assemble and, and so ideally uh, these element equations are uh, like like a matrix. So a linear system of equations and so uh, step three is assemble or combine uh, the element equations. Um, and this is necessary because the element equations just uh, ex they just represent what's happening over, a, over the domain that's described by that element. So we have to combine those all into one and usually it's one big huge matrix or system of equations uh, to solve uh, simultaneously. Uh, the fourth step then that we have to do is to apply two P's, apply the boundary constraints boundary constraints constraints or uh, or initial conditions whatever whatever you um, have, so you need to apply all those constraints. Uh, and then five is going to be solve the problem. And step six is uh, post processing. In other words, let's get that solution into uh, something meaningful. A lot of times, a lot of times this includes visualization it might also include uh, coming up with uh, any secondary variables, anything else that you need to do to post-process the data. So this is the finite element method. And again, um, each of these steps is, uh, we're going to go over each of these steps. And the most involved uh, out of all of these uh, conceptually is deriving these simplified finite element equations. So I think when we go through this, we're going to skip this uh, and then come back to it. Uh, as a last step.